Hey, what's up? Uh, Tyler here. I have an album review of the new Behemoth album entitled The Satanist. This has been going on uh, long anticipated for a long time. Uh, it's a follow up to 2009's Evangelion. Hope I said that right. And uh, yeah, I mean, Nurgle had that scare with leukemia, and so we're all awaiting this album. And before I dive into it, I got two things I want to say. Um, I meant to have this review up on Wednesday. Except, uh, my area got hit with, like, this ice storm, my electricity was out, so I didn't have power to upload it, really. Um, I could do that from my phone, but it would just drain the hell of my battery, and I couldn't really, uh, you know, afford to have my battery die. And then, I did this review three times, I was ten minutes into it, and got interrupted every single time, and I couldn't edit it, put it together, so I just said, fuck it, I'll do it then. Yeah, I'd listen to this album a lot more, which is a good thing. So, yeah, that's why it's up now. That's why it's a little bit late. Um, and I don't want to review leaks anymore. I'm tired of doing that. Um, so that's not happening either. So that's why this is happening now. And I must say, this is beautiful artwork. Um, sorry for the glare. It's got this nice shit on the cover. Um, but, no, that just I feel this is so high quality. This nice book. I just wanted to point this out. Um, seriously, they put a lot of effort into uh, just making a nice package, let alone an amazing record. So, yeah. Now it's time to dive into the music. Um, I'll say this. This is probably my favorite Behemoth album. And uh, I find this album to be a lot more accessible but then it's not accessible at the same time. I, I find this to be much better than uh, a lot of Behemoth material. Evangelion was my favorite Behemoth album up until this point. Um, I personally I, I feel that Demigod is overrated. Um, I just, come fight me. I hate Nurgle's vocals. I hate the way they sound on that record. Come fight me. Uh, sorry. Um... So I've always liked Evangelion because I feel that the it had the best production. Nurgle's vocals sounded the best there, and it just had the best songwriting in my mind. Um, and now there's this album. <laughs> um, I'll start off by saying that this this record has the best production of the Behemoth album in my eyes. I feel that um, it, 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 everything is so absolutely clean, and it's best if you listen through a, a, a stereo or something, because then you can really hear everything. The bass rumbles, the bass is there, it's audible, it is excellent, and it sounds great. The drums are captured so extremely well, Inferno's drumming is just phenomenal on this record, uh, period, but... They're, I feel they're captured so well. They're not overpowering. Everything just goes together like this. And, and that, like, with the production, you know, everything goes together great. It's just woven together perfectly. And same with the songwriting. The songwriting is just... I, it's the best songwriting I feel that Behemoth has had. These songs are... They're, they're much tighter. You can tell the band possibly could be very rejuvenated from taking you know, nearly five years off from rigorous touring and writing records and stuff. They just feel, it feels that this is fresh for them or something. Um, and so the songwriting feels so much more natural. It, it feels so much more memorable. And that's something that I always struggled with a little bit on the past Behemoth albums, is that not every song feels memorable. Not every song really jumps out at you. All nine tracks on this 44 and a half minute affair really jump out and capture you the whole time. Not so much maybe with some of their past albums. I'm not saying every Behemoth album fucking sucks, you know, all their songs aren't memorable. No, no, not that at all. Um, I'm just saying that this, I feel, is the most memorable album. And like I was saying, because it's memorable, because the songwriting's very tight and natural, and, and the songs just flow so much better... I feel that this is the most accessible album, but then I f it's not very accessible because of uh, the lyrical content. I feel 
could possibly turn people off. It, it doesn't affect me. I listen to Christian bands. I listen to Behemoth. I listen to Deicide and Aeon. I listen to everything. Lyrical content doesn't matter to me too much um, in an offensive kind of way. Um, but that's something that I can see maybe turning a couple people off. I don't know. But I find the lyrical content extremely cool. I, I love Nurgle's vocals. I've always loved them. When I first got Evangelion, on my very first Behemoth record, I would uh, put it on and... I do this with a lot of albums. I put it on, and, and I like to read along with the lyrics and, you know, really pay attention and dive into the lyrics. And I was just blown away by how masterfully written all of Nervil's vocals are. Um, even any of their albums. They're just fantastic. Um, and I feel the same way with this. I feel the lyrics really just... You can kind of paint your own picture, but they're, they're very cut and dry. This is an evil record. <laughs> and it, it, evil it is. It just has an evil sound. It has an e evil atmosphere. I don't know if I've ever listened to an album that has such an evil atmosphere as this one. It is incredible. It's seriously like a dark demon cloud just hanging over you the whole time while you're listening to it. You just It sucks you in, and it doesn't let you go. I Literally, I just put this on for the final time before I did this review. I listened to this record like six, seven times. I've lost track by now. Um, in the past two, three days, ever since it came out. Um, so I was putting on a, for one final time. I was uh, uh, doing something on my computer, and then I decided to uh, dig through the, the PlayStation Store on PS3, because I'm a homo. I was just looking at stuff, you know. And I just, I couldn't focus on anything I was doing, because this record just captures you the whole time and it does not let you go it's a very quick listen your, your 45 minutes will be gone like that before you can blink and it's it's very um enticing to listen to um getting a little bit back to the production but more on the vocal front i feel nervous sounds fantastic on this he really does i like a little bit more of the range i love how his vocals to, in my mind, they are properly produced on this album. He sounds so much more natural. He sounds great. I mean, he's not, you know, brutal on here, but he has some pretty damn strong vocals. He's always been a great vocalist, but I feel because the music is less of a black and death metal record and more of a black metal record, then I feel that these super brutal vocals wouldn't really work. And so I like how... He, he changed it up a little bit. I uh, th One thing that I noticed is there's a little bit more of a range, I feel, on his vocals here. Just listen to the title track, The Satanist. He hits his high scream, and I'm just like, yes, every single time I hear it. Um, it's really good. I, I Overall, he sounds so good. I'm just glad to hear him back, you know. I'm glad everything went okay with his leukemia and all that stuff, and he's and he's good now because it's great to hear Nerval back at the microphone again, writing fantastic lyrics and, and guitar riffs and stuff. Um, speaking of the riffs, like I said, I feel this is more of a black metal album. It, it, I mean, yeah, it, it kind of mixes both, but if you had to, if, if I was forced to pick black and death metal or black metal, I would pick black metal. A lot of the songs just have, you know, a lot of those black metal elements, some tremolo picking. I, I, I noticed it in the fourth track, um, let me try to pronounce it. The fourth track, it was the second one that they released, Aura Pro Nobis Lucifer. Um, lots of tremolo picking going on there. And then you take the song The Satanist or, or something like that that has those very dark melodies that a lot of black metal bands have. You know, it, it's distorted and it just sounds very evil. It's very diminished, very uh, much in a minor key. And it sounds great. And a lot of that is there. And then I think it's uh, the seventh track, I believe, has seventh, it's a seventh or eighth track, has a very dark, melodic type riff. And then a very simple, you know, a kick pedal snare beat behind it. And I'm just like, 
this is like raw black metal right here and it's great and and i mean like i said the black black and death metal is there in spurts but i mean i don't really care whether this was just pure black and death metal or pure black metal it doesn't matter because the riffs are just so excellent and i feel one thing that is such a improvement on this record and correct me if i'm wrong um I've never really noticed Behemoth solos before. Um, at least if they're there, they never really stood out to me like they do on on this record. I, you'll notice it right away in the third track. Let me try to pronounce this. Messe Noir. Hope I said that right. It's the third track. Um, and, and I noticed it right away. I'm like, this is amazing. This is one of the most well-executed, well-written solos I've ever heard in my life. Every single note fit so well in this solo same with in the title track the satanist just the solos are so well done on here i wish there was more i really really do and they also i mean yeah i wish there were more but they really fit where they where they are and uh, that's another testament to how great the songwriting is on here a lot of these songs are extremely catchy and will be stuck in your head all day and it's happened to me. I feel, like I said, there's a lot of atmosphere going on here. And there's a lot of absolute chaos going on sometimes. Um, track 4 stands out to me as probably one of the most chaotic tracks on this album. Because it starts off with an evil, you know, black metal riff, kind of. And some very epic chords coming in. And then it just busts into this... It just extremely energetic, extremely chaotic riff with some very tight drumming from uh, Inferno. And I mean, those drums, every time they kick in, I'm just like, oh my god, this is so cool. And then about halfway through that song, it just plays such a simple guitar riff. And then the drums kick in, and it's just, you want to jump in the pit, you want to destroy everything. And I'm just like, Yes, just listen to that song. It's incredible. Probably my favorite off the album. Um, and, and, you know, a, a couple other tracks really stand out. It's just absolutely bonkers songs. Um, track five. Um, Amen. Amen, man. Um, that, that one stood out to me as an extremely chaotic track. Also, track seven. Let me try to... Ben Sahar. Just... I mean, there's chaos all over the place, but those three tracks specifically just stood out to me where I'm just like, holy fuck, this is crazy. Some really crazy shit going on. Crazy songwriting. Um, and it's great. I'm not saying Behemoth has never been chaotic. They're one of the most chaotic bands I've ever heard. But uh, uh, like I said, I feel that the songwriting is a little bit more natural in here where it's not total chaos the whole time. Nothing feels forced about this. It's, it's really great. And I feel... There's a lot of epicness to a lot of these songs. They, there's a lot of songs on here where the last couple minutes are these long stretches. This band just jams, and it just, it's awesome to hear. It's just not, you know, the vocals are where vocals need to be, and then they'll just jam. It's great. Um, and also, uh, the last thing I'm going to say that really stood out um, is that I really loved the kind of the spoken word parts in tracks eight and nine um let me see here um in the absence of light and father of satan of son um uh, i just i love those it added so much atmosphere especially in track eight with the acoustic guitar and then there's someone talking and then in track nine where it just seems like someone is just you know really it's just belting it out it's very emotional to listen to and it just it was crazy and it was just the perfect way to end this record and uh that's all i really have left to say about this everything about this is a damn near fucking masterpiece I, i'm being serious um so far this is my front runner for album of the year um so far i know it's very very early but this will probably end up in my top five I guarantee you that it is. It is not one to miss if you are a metal fan. Um, I just feel that this is like mandatory pickup right here. 
Um, this is the first mandatory listen of 2014 in my eyes. And I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Definitely check this out. Behemoth, the Satanist on Metal Blade Records. Give this a spin. Give this many spins. Give this 4,000 spins. I might just go listen to it again. It's addicting. So definitely check this out. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Check out our most recent concert review, a review of uh, the new Within Temptation album, the new Primal Fear of Mice and Men. Check out all of them. Coming out with the reviews, I think I'll do Ex Mortis, and I will do Cynic very soon. Um, and then there's lots of other cool stuff, lots of discussions and all that stuff. Make sure you definitely check all this stuff out. Uh, we really would appreciate if you would do that. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you around.